Cape May, New Jersey, one of America's oldest tourist destinations and home to beautiful beaches and saltwater taffy. Everyone who has visited Cape May has said that it is a place filled with love and excitement. It is hard to find dismal sights in a town with rich history. It is also said to be one of America's most haunted locations. In a town filled with too much to do, it is almost impossible to stay bored. But this time of the year, when winter rolls around, us locals, we're here left alone. But the question is, are we really alone? So we have a Craig McManus uh, ghost walk today. Well, Craig McManus, um, he is a famous ghost writer down here in South Jersey. Um, he's written several books. Actually, I just got his uh, newest, latest one in the back. I'm a really open-minded person as far as ghosts are concerned. You know, actually, I feel like I've had experiences where I saw a ghost. I think I saw a ghost. Um, we're living in it. We're living in a town where there is a lot of hauntings, said to be hauntings. And Craig McManus, he uh, spends his time traveling around Cape May, various parts of Cape May, and uh, writes books and all of his experiences. And I've actually read a couple of his books, and it's actually very interesting because he used to come down here and vacation as a kid. And uh, he says even back then that he has experienced the paranormal world. Here we are, finally found a parking spot. Get this documentary started. See, these are the real hauntings of Cape May. The cost of parking. We were on our way to meet the one and only Craig McManus. We just first needed to check in. Hey, how are you doing? We're here, we're here for the Craig McManus Ghost Walk, six o'clock. People usually come here to see ghost walks and everything. Thousands of people. Wow, thousands of people. It goes on to talk about the thousands of people that come every year to see these paranormal events in Cape May. It's one of the top reasons why people love to come to Cape May during the fall season. When you're done. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. So these are all the people that are going to be here on the ghost tour. How you guys doing? Good. How are you? Good. You guys on the Cape May Yes. Ghost walk? Yes. You guys all believe in ghosts? Yes. yes. Good. We're actually making a documentary for uh, Lower Cape May today. I'm going to be interviewing Craig Man while he's here. Uh, so if you guys don't mind being on camera. Yep. Oh, now we're good. <laughs> one person. No, he's not. You're not the, the medium, right? The medium? No, I am not. Oh, okay. No, he's just doing the documentary. <laughs> After waiting for a couple minutes, the ghost writer himself, Craig McManus, arrived. After introducing myself to Craig McManus and showing the tickets and exchanging them for glow sticks, it was time to start the ghost walk. Craig went on to say that some places in Cape May are not haunted, even though they look like they would be. Um, yeah, it's, it's the Primo rental. Um, it's got the Great Tower and the, the Widow's Walk up there. Um, the, the wild thing about this, when, when Jay Shatz, who lives down here, used to own it, Jay, Jay said to me a few times, he goes, Craig, can't you find a ghost in my house? Everybody's asking. And there's, there's got to be a ghost. We had, I said, Jay, I've been all through that house. I've stayed there. There's nothing. Just because the house looks haunted doesn't mean it is. So, so when you see a house of this magnitude or this matter of history, you will sometimes have a predisposition of saying it must be haunted. But it's not because it's just an old, beautiful house. Now, you could import ghosts, I guess, if I got into the business of, of bringing them from other houses. I don't know if they cooperate. But, but this is a typical case where many people will see something and think it's haunted. Now, you might, by looking at this house, miss 
down here, the Stockton Row Cottages. So they close the shutters probably when it's off season. It might be closed up. Oh, that's pretty wild. As the tour went on, someone from the group took a picture of one of the houses and claimed he captured a pic of a ghost. That was a couple just now. seconds ago. And that was at where? Wow. Where we Stock, just were. Stockton Row Cottages. Stockton Row Cottages. That was at the one that was green, dark green. Uh -huh. Oh, really? He, he, has a, he, has a, he just took the picture. It's rare, but you can get something on camera. Um, it does happen. And the security cameras at the fish market have been picking things up, and they just got what looks like a guy moving around the restaurant, but he's transparent. Um, it's really cool. Um, the. Uh, I have the picture on, on Facebook, on my Ghost of Paint Maine uh, group on Facebook. If you go, it's there. You can, it you can, you can grab a copy. Yeah, right. We'll Let's get everybody in here. The ghost walk went on. Craig McManus brought us down to various parts of downtown Cape May. Although I did not see a ghost, I wanted to see if he could help. I wanted to learn more. A medium is someone who has psychic ability, and so all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. So a psychic is someone who senses energy around, can sense energy around people that might be able to sense things that are going to happen. A medium is a psychic who has the ability to communicate with the dead, to actually communicate with disembodied spirits. So a medium can channel, that's how we, that's what's called talking to the dead, it's called channeling. So when you channel a spirit, you are connecting mind to mind with that spirit. Do you consider yourself a medium? Or I'm a medium. Like, no, I'm a medium, yeah. So you can actually talk and... Like a psychic would be like a general practitioner, a medium would be a specialist. So I'm a psychic medium, but I would be, you know... You specialize. I spe yeah, that's so, so my main thing I do is channeling friends and family and loved ones. I do sessions for groups of people. So ghosts have always been a fun hobby of mine. So, so when you have like that activity, like, I mean, like I have that feeling that there's a ghost in the room, like how do you kind of have that sense? Like can you like describe like how it actually feels? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a feeling of a presence or a density that when you walk into a room, it's not just an empty feeling. It, it would be like if somebody walked up behind you and you knew somebody was standing there waiting, but you didn't turn around to look at them. It's, it's that kind of a feeling like you're not alone, but the, the most difficult thing that, you know, what, that I have trained several mediums, and one of the things that I have to work with them is you can't let your imagination run away with you. And that's very important because you could be, you know, hysteria and haunts are two different things. And it really attracts people to Cape May with the ghost and, and all the hauntings that happen here. Um, Cape, May, Cape May has such a rich history. I mean, it really just has layers upon layers of history. And, you know, in those layers of history are usually a few ghosts. Um, and I think it's very important when I, when I write, I always include a lot of the history. The ghosts are haunting for a reason, and their stories are really human interest. And that's what I really focus on, the human interest aspect. I don't do a ghost story because it's frightening or, or yeah. ghoulish yeah. or, you know, it's not like apocalypse, you know, zombies coming out of the ocean. It's like, to me, it's the human interest. It's why are they haunting? What, what was their story? Why are they still here? Although I did get to meet Craig McManus and get a signed copy of one of his books, I felt as if my view on the paranormal world had stayed the same. I knew that there were still paranormal mysteries out there in Cape May that I didn't know about. I wanted to see if I could sense the paranormal world just as easily as a medium like Craig McManus could. We set off to the most haunted beach in Cape May, Higby Beach. Joseph Higby died in 1872, followed by his brother Thomas in 1879. Tom Higby left his entire estate to Etta Gregory. In this will, he asked to be buried near the hotel in a grave lined with brick and flagstone. Many people over the years have spotted a man's ghost walking along dark paths at Higby Beach. Most assumed it was Old Man Higby. The most interesting spirits I encountered at Higby Beach were not 
local sailors, but Native American Indians. So, and according to Craig McManus, we have an old man spirit walking down Higby Beach and Native American spirits. We walked the trail to the beach, and during the walk, I could have sworn I heard a wrestle in the woods next to me. Did you hear that? Nothing came out of the Higby Beach experience, and although I learned more about Higby Beach and the supposed paranormal existence by reading Craig McManus's book, I felt as if I needed help. Help from an expert. Making our way back onto the island, our eyes were set on the Fisga State, which is nicknamed to be Cape May's original haunted house. Why is it that the Physica State is named one of Cape May's um, original haunted houses? Right, well that's a good question. Mm -hmm. And the reason that um, it's gotten that sort of name, or people know it as that, is that it actually was in the 60s and 70s pretty dilapidated. Yeah. It was very run down. How bad was it? It was bad. It was I, really bad? It was bad. Um, there were people who would sort of stop by. It was kind of like got the, it would got the reputation to be the haunted house on the street, the haunted house of Cape May, because it looked terrible. Uh -huh. um, it was in disrepair. And it really was right before the Mid-Atlantic Center for the Arts and Humanities took over and then began to renovate and rejuvenate the house. Um, so it's kind of a neat story that we feel very um, uh, good about because we kind of helped have, bring the house back from its so ghost it's, story. It's kind of like a reputation that the Physica State has. It's like, you know, this is a, one of Kate May's most original haunted houses. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's really cool. Exactly. It, it's, it, it probably has that reputation for several reasons, like I just said, mm -hmm. because people would drive by it in the 60s and early 70s and they, it, it was falling down. Yeah. It looked like a haunted house. Yeah. But we also have recorded some very interesting phenomena here. Yeah. Now, what do you do? Um, well, I work for the Mid-Atlantic Center for the Arts and Humanities. We are a not-for-profit organization. We're committed to promoting the preservation and the interpretation and the cultural enrichment of the Cape May region for everybody, for its residents and for its visitors. As you know, there are a lot of people who visit Cape May every year, thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands. And we help them understand and learn a little bit more about Cape May than they would know uh, before. Hand. Are so people we, usually interested in this whole ghost thing sure during the summertime? Are. I think they are. I think when you think about it, it's it's like a mystery. You know, it's something that you're really not sure about, but um, you may or may not believe in. You may say, "Oh, that's a bunch of hooey. I don't believe in anything. I ghosts are once you're dead, you're dead." There's other people who will say, "No, I didn't know. Maybe there's something beyond that we just don't." Oh, aren't aware of. Um, and I think the people who enjoy these types of things the most are the second group, the people who are still either skeptical <coughs> or else maybe do believe that there's something else beyond. People who will believe but who don't believe yet. Those are like the people who are more attracted to these kind of things. Well, people, uh, I think people are intrigued. I think almost anyone can be intrigued by these stories. They certainly, you know, um, you know, they certainly make you wonder, you know, what's what's happening. I mean, once we get it over to the house and you hear some more of these stories, you'll probably wonder yourself. Now, what should we expect today with the EVP? Right. Well, today we're going to walk on over to the Emlyn Physic House. It's an 1879 house, as I mentioned earlier. Um, a lot of history there, a lot of beautiful architecture there. Um, family lived there for many years. Um, and then what we're gonna do is 
talk to one of the guides. Um, Rosalie Gallagher is going to tell us about what some other, what she and perhaps some of the other guides have either experienced themselves or heard about through other guides. We've collected all these stories that the guides themselves have experienced in the house. After Susan welcomed us into the carriage house, we made our way over to the Physic Estate. Hello, how are you I'm doing? Rosalie. I'm Cole. Welcome to Dr. Physics Home. Nice to meet you. I have to say, our doctor, he uh, he moved into the home in, um, in 1879. It is an 18-room villa, and he lived here with his mother, Frances Ross, and she was twice widowed, so that's why she has a different name. And I believe he had children? No, doctor he had no children. He, he no never children. married. He never married. He also lived here with his Aunt Emily Parmentier, his mother's youngest sister. She never married. Also briefly for three years was a middle sister, uh, his mother's sister, Isabella. She lived here three years when she passed away. All passed away in this home. The doc, uh, well, first his mother died in uh, 1915. She was 84 years of age. Seven months later, her son, Dr. Fisick, passed away. It was very sudden. Uh, he had a cerebral hemorrhage. He was only 61 years of age. And then Aunt Emily lived in this house 19 years till after the death of her uh, nephew. She passed away in 1935, and she was 87 years of age. She was only seven years older than her nephew. Wow, they, so all, that, they all died in this estate right here? Yes. Yes. Uh, and I believe uh, Dr. Physic was a rich man. He was a very well-to-do man. Yes, his money came from the old-time colonial money. His, uh, he descended from a very famous wealthy Philadelphia family. His grandfather is known as the father of American surgery. He invented numerous medical, pr medical procedures and instruments. One thing his grandfather invented today that we still use today are Excuse me, I'll back up. One thing the grandfather invented that we still use today is the stomach pump. And I heard about that. We, he created stuff that we still use today in yes. our medical yes. rooms. Yes. And if you go over to our uh, museum gift shop, there in the refrigerator you'll find Dr. Physics Cherry Soda. It was invented by uh, uh, our doctor's grandfather. In here, in the formal parlor, here it was late at night, she was closing up for the evening, and when she walks in, the book right here was standing up. Like that? Yes, and she says, oh, or something like that, and the book went down. Now, she tried to recreate it by bringing the fan over and having the fan blow, but the book... Could not stay up. No, no. There's no stand. No, there's no to. stand. No. And then later on, I will show you an orb that was taken from here. Oh, here it is. This is the orb. That's the orb. And that was taken at which right spot? Right here. Right here. Yes. And you guys captured an orb right yes. there. And where do you think, um, who do you think this orb was from? I have no idea. I have no idea. How long idea. ago was this? Oh, let's see. Let me think about that. About three, four years ago? About maybe six. Six? About six years about ago. About six years ago. Now, explain this room. Like, what is this room? This is the music room. This is the, this is the room. formal side of the home. That was the formal parlor there. This is the music room. And uh, when the, in the family played music for the uh, his, Well, the doctor played the Aeolian, and uh, I believe that was against that back window in the front room. Which is yes. probably taken out. Who yes. played the harp here? And, no, and that's no. just a museum piece that okay. we have. And the piano does not belong to them. It was... Um, it did not belong to the family. Wow. Rosalie then led us to the informal visitor's room of the estate, where there have been sightings of Dr. Physic's dogs.
Now, can I tell you something, a couple things that happened here? Absolutely. Okay, it'd be two years this August that our maintenance guy, Wayne, it was like 7 o'clock in the morning. He does all the vacuuming and dusting in the home. And he said he was coming into the room with his vacuum sweeper, and he started to come in, and he says, uh-oh. And he slowly backed out, and he said he waited a full moment, then came back in, and what he saw originally was not there. What he did see was a dog here, right here. He saw a dog. The dog. I, oh, I forgot to mention I, to you. No, Our doctor. I, I have read about the uh, dog ghost stories. Dr. Physic, he was a big dog fan, and he loved his dogs. Yes, And supposedly, did. from what people have heard, and I've read through Craig McManus's books, that he has actually heard the barks of dogs and the sound of dogs running through this house. Yes. Yeah, explain mm -hmm. that. Yep. Yeah. So here was one of them right here witnessed by uh, Wayne. And uh, I, I said, Wayne, uh, what did the dog look like? He said he had a little bit of black and rust, brown and white. So that was the description I, I got of the dog. The right on the uh, okay, it was September 6th. I don't want you to see the picture yet. 2014. It was an evening with Don Balda, Ghost One Investigations. He set a uh, trail cam right here. Okay, so when the camera clipped, it's going through these um, railings here and capturing over by the mirror. And after all our years of talking about the ghost and everything, we finally captured a woman ghost. We have no idea who she is. Now remember, here she is. She's right here. Now this picture is being shot through here. Mm -hmm. So here she is looking in this mirror. This mirror right here. Yes. See her hair? Her face, and she's got the long dress on. Can you see it, Eric? Yes, and who do you believe this is? We have no idea. If we don't know who they are, we don't say who they are. But I have to tell you, on one of uh, Rosemary's EVPs, um, in Ghost One Investigation, the question was asked, how many are there in the house? And the response was nine. We have no idea who nine are. So. At once. I don't know. They just said nine, yeah. so I don't know. But there she is. Can you get a good picture of her, Eric? Yep. I think we already did. And you can see her hair up there. Okay. So that's the whole outline right there. That's yeah. her mm -hmm. looking into this mirror yes, right here. Yes, and it's shot through those reels there. First of all, do you believe in ghosts? Do I believe in ghosts? Actually, I've never had anyone yet ask me that on my documentary. You know, actually, I'm one of those people to where I want to believe, mm -hmm. but I don't believe yet. Like, I, I feel I would be simple-minded to say that there isn't. So I do believe that they could exist, but me solely, I do not believe in ghosts. Okay. Well, you'll just listen to some of our EVPs, and then maybe you just may change your mind. Our young registrar, Ben Ridings, he didn't believe in ghosts either. You ask him today, does he believe? Oh, yes. Now, are there does. stories actually throughout um, your experience with ghosts to where um, people did not believe, but yeah. now they do? Uh, how many cases and how many times? I don't know, but when Rosemary plays those EVPs and the men hear the voices, it gets them wondering. It really now, does. Now, do you yourself, do you believe in ghosts? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, I do. Too much has happened in this house. Yes. As long as I don't see them. But I know they're here. Now, what makes you believe? Like, what makes you believe that there are ghosts? And that, not just the physical state, but just everywhere. I don't know. I guess it's my experience here at the physic house. Um, the different things like the very first time we were doing Midnight at the Physic Estate, this is going back 
I guess to 07, 08, and we were in the entrance hallway, and we were all downstairs, 25 guests, Craig, his associate, and myself, and Rosemary, and we were downstairs, and you can hear the footsteps up above here. There was no one in the house. So what is the feeling when you hear those footsteps? Because obviously with an older house like this, um, like, do you feel like a vibration under your feet as you're sitting down of people actually walking? Or you know, can you, you just, just hear, hear it. it? You just you hear, hear it. it. And like one night, uh, Nancy, my other boss, and Rosemary, they were in the tour office. The house was alarmed, so we know no one was in the house. The, the alarm was set. And they heard the footsteps go across the back kitchen. So and there's no one in there. Amazing. Yeah. It's too many things that have happened. and uh, You, you just find it hard to not believe. Yes, yes. Because of so many experiences you had. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And we continued our tour of the Physic Estate, and we eventually made our way to Dr. Physic's room. Yes, that's his closet. The furniture was his. And um, are these his hats right here? I'm not sure. Uh, and if I'm not sure, I'll just tell you, mm -hmm. just like I would a visitor. And uh, the bathroom, I think, is kind of unique here because it's a step down. I always wondered if he had problems during the night, if he ever fell. Um, one night we were doing a Ghost One investigation and the EMF of Rita right here was going crazy. And then as the guest that had it walked away, it, uh, the red would just disappear on the meter. And as they got closer, the meter would just go crazy again. Which was pretty much sensing that there was some, some sort of entity uh, right yes. there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Rosemary is going to play for you an e, uh, EVP of a little girl. And uh, you hear, we don't know, we think it may be a marble rolling across the floor. or And then you hear the little girl clap and say, it's mine. And it is so loud, you can't miss it. It wasn't so, across. Um, this EVP reading that you're going to be showing us is taken where? In this room. In Dr. Physics' room. Yes. Um, yeah. How long ago? Uh, let me see if I have the date. It's a 2012. 2012. Okay. Several people are sitting on the floor. Uh, you're going to hear people talking about Greystone because we had just been to Greystone doing an investigation there. Okay. And this is what you're going to hear. Wow. Did you hear Did the, you the hear? dropping? And, that and dropping. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you'll hear the dropping, like, and then she'll say it's mine. I'll play it again for you. Wow. Well, hear that? It's, it's mine. mine. Mm -hmm. All these EVPs, none of them did not hear any of them with their own ears. Mm -hmm. We just heard them as we played back the recording. Okay. This one here, um, once again, we don't know where. Apparently, there must have been two spirits here for one of them to say, I will, Mama. So, everything that um, you're showing with the EVPs, um, they're taken in each room that we go to. Yeah, the ones that um, play in the back. Because what I've done is I just have, like, you know, like you have hours and hours of. Yeah. Data, and you have to sit there and listen to every bit of data mm -hmm. and, um, and you have to be very quiet it's you'll hear nothing for hours and all of a sudden you'll hear you'll capture something so it's, mm -hmm. it's it, 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 you have to have a lot of patience to do yeah. this our time with Rosalie and Rosemary was almost up but before we left I just had to question Rosemary's belief in ghosts have you, Rosemary, ever, like, I know, like, you've got the EVP readings, but have you ever, you physically, um, experienced anything with a ghost? 
Well, the one that saw the pit, uh, the foot, the photo album in the former pile of the page standing straight up. Um, I've seen people enter in other rooms when I thought there was supposed to be no one on that floor. They're supposed to be out. They came off the tour, go in the room, they're not there. Um, I would say a lot of us have seen things that we can't explain. And I didn't know whether to believe in all this stuff either until I started working here. So there's something out there, and that's why we work with Ghost One to see if we can get some answers. And hopefully one day we will. And we'll know exactly who is here. And Carlton. Now what do you think? Just a little towards believing? I mean, definitely I believe that there is a world beyond ours. Like, I think all of this is, you know, too big to be randomized. Like, I think most scientists say, like, I think everything that we have, you know, I do believe in spirits for sure. But as far as ghosts, like, that's where I kind of want to ask the question, like, what's the difference between like religion and ghosts whereas supposedly according you know to christianity you either go to heaven or hell all that kind of stuff where's the middle ground where you do stay here on earth like if if there is a better you know world beyond ours like heaven why would you want to come back that's the question uh, in his book rick says the difference between a ghost and a spirit a spirit has died and crossed over to the other side they can return here to earth and help and guide us and many people think of them as our guardian angels a ghost on the other hand has died but has not crossed over yet there are many reasons why one could be because your spouse is still left behind a loved one or could be a material attachment things go on and on sudden tragic death you weren't ready to die Thanks, Colton, thank you. and thank you so much thank for visiting so much. Dr. Physics Home. Eric, thank you. Thank you. And Susan, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, Colton. It was a pleasure. Thanks so so glad you could experience thank it. You. I left Dr. Physics' estate with the information, yet I was still skeptical. We shifted our focus to the Mad Batter Restaurant and Hotel, where it is said to be a very ghostly active place to visit. I met with the owner, Mark Kolkowitz. This, the hotel is built in 1882. 1882. So it's a National Historic Landmark named after a signer of the Declaration of Independence, Tom Carroll, who was from the state of Maryland. And these hotels, like the Virginia, or Congress Hall, or the Inner Cape May, or the Chalfont, were all built after the Great Fire in Cape May. Right. Now yourself, do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> I would like to think there's ghosts, especially beautiful ghosts that I that are soft to the eyes. I get that a lot. A lot of never asked that. Yeah, I mean, if somebody came today, is doing a ghost story somewhere in town. Um, I believe in, you know, there are spirits, there are channeling, and I I would not say that that doesn't happen. I mean, it's it's just like the beauty of life. You know, you see people and say, remind me of this person or that person, but I don't actively think, okay. I'm going to go talk to a ghost tonight, but... Well, yeah. you talked to Craig McManus. He's the... Uh, right, Craig's right. done a lot of things yeah. and done things here in town, and I you know, I think that's part of history, part of life, is that we're, it's generations. Life It's a constant, constant, continu continuity of life, and, yeah. and one generation leads to the next, so... That's so what he was talking about. He, uh, when he visited here at the Mad Batter, he felt almost like a presence of a woman, from what I read in his book, that... It's the first time he felt overwatched, and that she could supposedly listen in on what he's saying and what he's actually thinking. So I don't know if like any of like your coworkers or. Well, I think if you ask Michael at the bar, he's here today, and I think Kyle, they'll tell you that they had some experience with ghosts there. Okay. They're here today, and I had a baker who, very religious person, very straight person. She said one day, pennies were falling from the ceiling here, and she would be the last person that I would think would ever talk about. Ghosts or pennies were falling from the ceiling. Right. It was legit pennies, or she actually felt like there were pennies. I think she said they were the legit pennies, but she's not here today. But she said, Mark, I never would have thought any of this is real, but yes. We were able to get a quick tour of the hotel portion of the place where most of the hauntings occur. Like, do you, do you yourself believe in ghosts? I believe in spirits. I don't believe there's ghosts that can hurt us. Okay, so you believe in spirits, like the afterlife, but you don't believe well, I just, in just... I think that I had a woman come and tell me one time she had a conversation with 12 spirits in the 
in the parlor. Really? Yeah. Uh, guests heard anything with any I sort guess of like one time like they, they were a family staying here and that their alarm clocks went off both at the same time in the morning and the, nobody set them. I had that guess say that before. Yeah. You know, but I people do say that they you know, hear or they just feel things but the book that I've read, including the Craig McManus book, I've heard stories about an old lady that has been walking around or you just feel like there's a presence that she's like stalking you. So I guess there's some sort of old lady entity kind of here. Oh, there's the woman that I that told me there was 12. They were all older, men and women, people that have lived here in the past. Like they've lived here and they were just so comfortable and loved the place so much they just don't want to leave. There's also a little boy here, she told me. A little boy. Mm -hmm. Can you describe the little boy? No, the lady that told me. There was a lady that told me. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. How old is this room? This is an, this 1882. This this had, hasn't had any work other than a bathroom, I think, put in it. Wow, 1882. That's when it was built. Yeah. Now, do you think, from uh, just your kind of just opinion in general, do you think this whole ghost phenomenon, wherever you may be, Gettysburg, Cape May, do you think it just it's like a business kind of thing where it just kind of drives up business? People want to stay at this hotel just because they know mm -hmm. that's haunted. Mm -mm. No, I've never had people say they were gonna say it just because it was haunted. Really? Mm -mm. It's like people have actually heard stuff. They've yeah. Oh, yeah. The people have had conversations. Like I said, that lady wow. had a conversation with twelve of them. So. Yeah. I mean, she was normal. I mean, she seemed normal. <laughs> she seemed so, normal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I guess it depends on the person. But I wouldn't say people stay here just because it's no. haunted. Because not many people come in and say, "Oh, I heard you're haunted," either. Mm. It might scare some people away. Man. But, I don't know, I'm comfortable in here. Yeah, and on the other hand, you think it would kind I mean, of I mean, because there's some places you go in and, and it feels scary. Yeah, like whether the, it, it would be good or bad for the business, you know, whether if people are just, you know, ghost junkies and they just want to stay everywhere, it would be haunted, supposedly. Correct. Or if, you know, they're scared and they will have nothing to do with that, so it would drive away. So I guess it could go either way. And I think you've read all the information, so you know. Yeah. A lot of people don't read those books, so they, they wouldn't even know haunting even occurred here, if it did. I know half the people who come to Cape May, they don't even know that it is one of the most haunted areas in America. Right. Until they actually hear it from locals. Okay. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very nice much. meeting you. Good meeting you. Nice meeting you. Take thank care, you. guys. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Throughout my research and travels around the island, I've gotten a better understanding of the alleged hauntings that take place in Cape May, New Jersey. Real or not, Cape May thrives on the ghost speculations that take part. There are different stories everywhere you go in Cape May, and although my opinion on ghosts had not changed, I still feel that there is a world beyond ours. What we may think is ultimate human fact may not always be the ultimate truth. <laughs>